That's Dalmatians. Other attainable objectives. Uh, <clears throat> and I'll talk about these first two a little bit uh, in when I talk about managing acute oliguric renal failure. But to improve renal blood flow, we can do saline diuresis, all right, fluid diuresis, where uh, we're volume loading them and then increasing their maintenance rates about two and two and a half times off what would be normal to increase their GFR. And as I already mentioned, we do that uh, <coughs> in cisplatin therapy and uh, amphotericin B the regular amphotericin B therapy to try to minimize the nephrotoxicity. We use dopamine agonists, uh, again, primarily here in oliguric renal failure. When fluid loading and diuretics have not otherwise worked. And then we use ACE inhibitors uh, to manage particularly proteinuria in chronic renal disease. All right, let me talk a little bit more about uh, increasing renal blood flow with dopamine. And dopamine is the drug just like it is the receptor, so that's a one-on-one -on -one, uh, scenario. And dopamine exists outside the CNS. Certainly dopamine is important in the CNS uh, as a neurotransmitter, but it exists out elsewhere. It's in the intestinal vessels, the splanchnic vessels, but we take advantage of it because it has high concentrations in the renal artery of dogs and humans. We give this as a CRI because it's got an extremely short half-life, two minutes in man, uh, <coughs> and there's no accumulation. I'm saying that because, uh, remember, dobutamine does accumulate, but that's a different drug. This is dopamine. Now, uh, I've alluded to this under the vasopressor uh, activity where we use it there. We have three doses. Low dose, <coughs> uh, we get the um, dopamine receptor stimulation. That's what we're talking about here. Mid dose, we get beta-1 stimulation and a positive ionotropic effect. And high dose, high dose is where we use it as a vasopressor. There we, we're stimulating alpha receptors. So which receptors are stimulated by dopamine depends on what dose you use, okay? High doses can cause tachyarrhythmias. Now, <clears throat> one of the controversies is it does not appear to work to improve urine flow uh, or um, renal blood flow and hence urine flow in cats. So dopamine is used in dogs in acute uh, oliguric renal failure, but doesn't seem as effective in cats. Which brings us to phenoldepam. Phenoldepam is a newer dopamine agonist uh, <coughs> uh, with no alpha or beta effects. And it's approved as a, uh, to control blood pressure in humans and has been used uh, as a renal protectant in high risk human patients. It has a higher affinity for the dopamine receptor and it appears it does uh, interact with the cat renal artery. So this may be able to stimulate the dopamine receptor in the cat renal artery, whereas plain dopamine may not. So there is a little bit of work, not nearly as, as well studied as dopamine in this regard, but some work suggests it may increase renal blood flow in not only the dog, but also the cat. All right. And ACE inhibitors. We, we've already studied ACE inhibitors in the cardiovascular sections where we talked about its benefits in congestive heart failure and in hypertension. But it turns out it also preferentially vasodilates the efferent arterioles of the glomerulus to decrease filtration pressure. And I, I, I don't know about you, but I always get afferent com confused with efferent. Efferent is the outgoing artery. Afferent is the incoming artery. E comes after A. You can remember that. Uh, <coughs> and it decreases proteinuria. And that's its, its main use in protein losing glomerulonephropathy. And it's important not because, only because we don't want to lose protein and get hyperproteinemic, but it turns out that protein in the renal tubule is actually nephrotoxic. So uh, we can slow uh, the progression of the disease injury 
somewhat by decreasing that proteinuria. Now, enalapril and benazapril both do this. In renal failures, we tend to use the benazapril because it's less affected by uh, creatinine clearance um, derangement. So either will work in uh, most animals, but if it's a true renal failure, most people you're gonna see benazapril used. And one point of confusion, in fact, I, this actually came up in ICU rounds last week. A student asked, <coughs> why do we check the BUN and creatinine when we first put an animal on an ACE inhibitor? Is it nephrotoxic? Okay, and that's the standard recommendation. You put them on an alapril, say for congestive heart failure or benazapril, and we come back in about a week and check their BUN and creatinine. That is not because it's nephrotoxic. What we're doing that for is because we don't have a readily accurate and available way to check blood pressure in a lot of clinics. We're using the BUN serum creatinine as an indirect measure of pre-renal acetemia. A few of these animals get hypotensive on that dose of an ACE inhibitor and they get pre-renal acetemia. So that's the reason that we're checking BUN and serum creatinine, not because it's nephrotoxic. 